Hello, Micro here. Welcome once again to my Photoshop tutorials. Today using CS4, I'll show you how to make an animated signature for your website. I'm going to keep this video simple and as quick as possible as I already have my pictures that I'm going to be using for my signature up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started by making a new composition of the proper size. Go up to File and click on New. Now what I find works great for a website is if we have 350 wide and make sure this is set to pixels and height is 100 wide tall pixels. Keep the resolution at 72, keep it at 8 bits and oftentimes when you're doing a signature like this you want to tra change the background from white to transparent and press OK. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get a background for our composition. So we'll go over here to this picture I made that I call Moon Eclipse and we're going to want to cut a section of this out using the crop tool. So you can press C on your keyboard and that'll bring up the crop tool or you can simply click on the tool panel on the left. Now you want to crop more of the area than you think you're going to need just to make sure that we have enough to work with. And you have to right click and press crop to actually crop it. Now we want the move tool which is V. We can just drag and drop onto our composition and here we can see we've got plenty to work with. Place it right about where you think you're going to like it to end up. Now I like to have text be animated across the screen and end up in a certain point. You might want a character or who knows what, a car going across the screen. So we're going to go over here where I already have Mass Effect 2 cut out and ready to use. So since we have the Move tool selected and this layer selected, we can just grab it and bring it to our composition folder and drop it right on top. Now this is a lot bigger than we want it to be. You can't see anything else behind it. Now there's an easy way to fix that. You use Control T, which is the free transform shortcut, and grab a corner and just drag it down until you get it about the size you think you want it. And move it around and place it and just get it to look just right for you. And when you're done getting it where you want it and the size you want, just simply double click on it to deactivate the free transform tool. Now I want to touch up the Mass Effect 2 lettering a little bit, make it a little easier to see and put my own spin on it. So I'm going to go up here to Styles where I've already downloaded some off the internet and found the ones I like. I'm going to use the Sophia Stone style which makes it kind of a golden bronze and that looks pretty good but I want to add a drop shadow to it so I'm just simply going to right click on the layer click blending options and tick the drop shadow and it makes the words stand out a lot more so you can see them better and of course press OK. Keep in mind that it's a good idea to name your layers so that you don't get confused about what is what and if you're unsure of what layer is which just click the eyeball to remove it and you'll know that that's your text layer. So I'm going to double click on this and call it ME2 text and then click anywhere. I already know that the colored background of course is the moon so I don't need to rename that but what's this first layer? This is our composition that we first made but we no longer need that so I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Oops, got to click on it in the blue and delete layer just that way we don't get confused. Now it's time for the animation. Come up to the top here and click on Window and go down to Animate and check that. This opens up a new animation box on the bottom. Now if you don't have this animation, animation box, come down here into the lower right and you can click on Convert to Timeline Animation and it'll make this box which is easier to work with with signatures. Now when you make an animation frame and have it activated down here in the animation frame timeline, this is going to be where the product will end up at. Now since we're making this an animation, what we're going to do is move everything off screen and have it move onto the screen. So first I'll start with the text. We'll select that layer and I'll move it just off screen. Then I'll come down and select the background layer and move that so we can watch the moon rise. That looks good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and create a new frame layer. 
Now we're only going to have to work with these two because of a special feature called tweens, which I will show you in a moment. So let's go ahead and move the moon up to where we want its final place to be. That looks good. And we'll go back and move the text over to where we want its final place to be also. And that looks great there. Now what we can do is hold down the shift key and select both of these animations. We go down and hit the tweens or the between layers. Click on that and it asks us how many layers do we want to add between the start of our picture and the end of our picture. The more you have, the smoother the effect will be. I find 10 or 12 is ideal. Click OK. See it automatically adds in all of the keyframes that we need. Now a couple things I like to do is you can select how long it's going to take or how long each frame will be up. Zero or no delay is great because it makes very smooth animation but if you want your animation to run a little longer you can do 0.1 second or what have you. Now at the very last keyframe I actually like to have it pause there for a couple seconds. So I'll choose two seconds. We'll go back to our first keyframe and we're going to watch this. Now make sure that you have forever activated. That way it'll just keep looping over and over again. Here I'll press play and we'll watch our animation. And one, two. It pauses there and then starts again. I think that looks pretty good. So now we're going to have to save it or export it. Now before we save this, if you want to change the time on all of your keyframes, simply hold down the shift key, click or select one of the keys on the end, and then click and select the one on the other end. Then you can go down, press the little black arrow, oops, and you can just choose the time that you want and they will all activate to this particular time. That will save you a lot of time and hassle by using that. So we're going to go up here to file and we're not going to save as like you normally would with a Photoshop document. We're going to choose the save for web and devices because we have to save this as a GIF, G-I-F. If you save it as anything else, it won't be animated. And all of these settings are pretty much already set where you need them. So you can just go ahead and press save. And of course, tell it where you want it to save to. And when you're done with this, you can upload this to like say photobucket.com and it will save it as an animated GIF and then you can just save the image copy and paste it onto your web page. I hope you enjoyed the video I help, hope you understood it please be sure to rate and comment if you see anything I didn't cover please be sure to let me know as well and also over in the description I'll try to post links for other people's videos that I found helpful in learning how to do this key animation